third try. Hello and welcome to Mugman Reviews, where today we'll be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man, as he's known, made by Hasbro. Let's first talk about the accessories. It comes with two fisted hands, one that, that's actually on the figure, one open slash crawling hand, well two, one that's on the figure, and of course two whipping hands and a slice of pizza, hence his name, as well as a, an alternate head. She's detailed pretty good, except for the paint that's bleeding into the red. As you can see, it's kinda, kinda bad. Especially on that side. And there's like this dot here on mine, and a, a white dot. But, I'm pretty sure those weren't there when I bought this figure. Especially not the white one. But that has something to do with those webs I made years ago. They had like white out instead of white paint. It was it was a weird time. Now, the most important accessory. He is very detailed and to me this looks like a slice of Domino's pizza. I don't know why. It's that. It just reminds me of Domino's for some reason. But it's probably supposed to be more of a New York style pizza. Y you know the type. The type I'm sure that this uh, geek from Queens would be quite fond of. But that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at the detail in the paint and in the sculpting. And after that, articulation. Well, you see, might actually be hard to see. Okay, no, you can see it. There's a lot of sculpted detail, the generic kind for, like, muscles. The paint apps are really good, aside from the areas where it was scratched off. Worst area here, you see, uh... This, this is hella loose because the torso was kind of open. I tried to hot glue the torso together. And I screwed up. And no matter how much I scratch at it, or get a sewing needle to it, that, that paint's not, that, that hot glue's not coming off. I tried to modify the leg. That didn't work either. At this point, I just want to take a nice hair dryer to it. And as the plastic's really warm and soft, hold it there around this joint here so it'll be tighter. Before I do that I should probably get this uh, hot glue off. But as far as paint goes, aside from the scratched off areas, the paint apps on the figure itself are good. And then there's that barcode. I mean, everyone has a problem with it. Couldn't put it where they sculpted in this copyright information I can hardly see. They couldn't have put that there. Somewhere less conspicuous, not on the back of this figure's thigh. I mean, come on, guys. That's just poor planning. Oh, and unlike the other mask, the paint apps on this one are quite clean. Which is great, because seeing that skin color, you know, mesh with the red is messing with my OCD, among other things. I actually hadn't noticed it until I did this review. I mean, seriously, isn't that weird? Alright, the articulation on both heads are about the same. He looks this far up and this far down. He's got butterfly joints. Ball jointed shoulders. Complete 360 rotation at the bicep. Double jointed elbows. Wrists are hinged to go this way. And this way. It's not like Black Cat, for example, where one hinges up and down. So yeah, no point in interchanging the hands just to show off the different motions. Um, he has an ab crunch that goes this far forward, this far back, 360 at the waist. The non-modified thigh, this one, goes out about this far, and the modified one goes out that far but doesn't stay to save its life. can kick this far forward and this far back. Although, I don't understand why everyone gets so hungover about the kickbacks. What human can kick that far back? He's got thigh swivel, double jointed knees, no shin swivel, but ankles move down, up, and, you know, Hasbro's stellar ankle pivot everyone loves, including myself. Wait a minute, before we do the size comparison, I gotta go bring something from the other two parts no one will ever see. Something that bothers me about this figure and this, like, mold in general. This elongated torso is just weird. I mean, I saw some things like that in this comic right here, but more importantly, you'll see it with the artist for most of Dan Slott's Spider-Man run, or at least the earlier, not the earlier, earlier days, but like, like, like this artist here. 
you'll see a bit of that elongated torso. It's kind of weird. At least I think I'm thinking of the right artist. Superior Spider-Man issue 30 or 29, whichever one where he got back in his red suit and he was in a pose similar to this. There was definitely the elongated torso, which in my opinion is quite weird. He stands just about six and a half inches tall, but because this ruler has like this nothing space, I just line it up the best I can. But, you know, he's about six and a half inches tall. Here he is standing next to the modified, because my dog ate, you know, his foot. Who, and my dog's also outside my room. Triple Threat, Urban Legends, Sneak Attack, Spidey. I just noticed the paint's rubbing off on those thighs. But, yeah, they're all, like, almost the same size, you know. His torso isn't bent. And if he had a slightly bigger head. Here he is compared to the Ultimate Spider-Man. Just gonna move that stand. Which, you know, he should be a tiny bit taller then, considering this is a teenager and this is an adult. But if Dan Slott's writing him, are we sure he's an adult? Alright, Dan's done some good work in the past and now, so, uh... I take that back. Here he is compared to one of Dan's better things, the Superior Spider-Man. Which he shares, like, the legs and arms of. And the torso, except they made it slightly longer. He is just a tiny bit taller than him, like... Half a head taller. And here he is next to the, uh... Trilogy line, Superposable Spider-Man, which he is a bit taller than as well. And here he is with his most classic rogues, Venom and J. Jonah Jameson. And Venom is a fair bit taller, and J. Jonah Jameson is... A little bit shorter, and J. Jonah Jameson is also Hammerhead and the Chameleon, because, you know, all those were really just one chameleon figure. But I normally keep him as J. Jonah Jameson. I don't know, I mean, as Hammerhead, he seems a little bit too scrawny. It works for Chameleon, but also works for Jameson. should probably get another one of those and just customize it. Then I could use that custom head and make Ultimate Universe Boulevard Trask. But yeah, just one more pe- well... One more group to compare him to. And I'll do this with, uh, you know what, I won't even do it with a snap transition, I'll just do it. Here he is with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 1 Mary Jane, and the glare's really getting on Kirsten Dunst's face. Black Cat, who I had trouble standing, and when she fell the first time I tried, it knocked over him. And my custom Mary Jane, who, considering her size, I might just make an ultimate Mary Jane, using the head of the uh, vintage wave Black Widow. Lovely. So, yeah, that's my review, guys. I hope you like it. I certainly didn't, and uh, have a good day, everyone.